Hi there, I'm making a picket fence and gate in the workshop this week and I've already brought in and cut to size all the redwood I'm using for this job. Here I'm putting a bevel on top of all the staves and then cutting the same angle on the posts and also cutting the posts to length. The fence rails are 1x4 and the gate rails 1x3 and all the redwood rails have a small bevel put on the top edge to help with rainwater runoff. You don't see me use hand tools very often, but there's something quite satisfying about this. Once all the cutting and planing is out of the way, all the components get a good sanding. The pickets or staves are all 1x3 redwood and the fence posts 2x2 two two, and the gate posts 3x2. Uh, one of the things I like to do before we start getting paint or primer and everything, even though we've got everything cut and ready to go, um, is just to do a rough markup on, on where the staves of the picket fence are actually going to go. I've, I've done some rough calculations obviously. Um, uh, and what I've done with the rails, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, we made them slightly long, let them overhang a little bit, and then we can cut them back later. Again, because the walls it's going to fit within aren't necessarily perfectly even or perfectly level, you never quite know until you're there fitting it just how much space you're going to need. So I let it overhang by you know an inch or two at either end, and then cut it back. So that's our starting point, roughly, where we want the... staves to go. So with our starting point marked we can begin laying out the staves along the length of the rails using an MDF spacer cut to the width I worked out earlier. And that all seems to work out very nicely so I can mark this spacer as a keeper and get cracking on with some priming. Customers just rang and uh, she said, uh, Pete, I just thought, you know in the, the drawings you showed me yesterday, I've just realised I, I think I quite like the fence and the gate to have those sort of pointy tops. It's not too late, is it? <laughs> no, of course not. So it's off with the bevels, on with some points and then a load more priming. Now I'll confess, I'm not a huge fan of table saws, don't use them much. I keep this one here, just to do stuff like this, narrow rips and putting points on things. So the, um, the top coat that the client's chosen for this, it's called railings. And painting a fence with railings. <laughs> I know, I know, but it's a really dull job and I have to amuse myself where I can. So with all our staves and our pickets all nice and dry, all painted up and ready to go, and the, the rails all looking uh, pretty sweet, um, we're, we're pretty much ready to start marking out and uh, nailing all this together. One of the things I did want to show you just quickly is that when I put this workshop together, although the benches are only just sort of sheets of sacrificial MDF uh, on a, on a uh, redwood base, I did make sure that the front edges of all the sheets aligned. Yeah, if you side down it all the way down, you can see what I mean. Obviously this cutting table sticks out a little bit, but the two benches are absolutely in line. Now one of the advantages of this, of course, is that if you align something square with this edge and pop a clamp on it, you know that they are perfectly aligned. So with our top rail in place, and I want to get the bottom rail fixed in place. Uh, and what I like to do is just use a couple of little bits of scrap um, just, to, just to have in there as guides so we keep a consistent position. Then we can use our roofing square on the edge 
just to make sure that the two start points are identical. A couple of little uh, straps straight into the bench, they're not going to move anywhere. So with those reasonably firmly fixed and clamped down, just going to make sure that um, we've got enough uh, space for the for the rails. So we need about 175mm there, which is spot on. I know I keep banging on about consistency, but in order to get this right every time, it's, um, it's good to make a little jig, a little guide for this. Uh, and what I've got, I kept a couple of the little sort of ears of uh, when I was cutting the uh, the corners off. They've got some just some double stick tape, some carpet tape stuck to the back of it. Just pull those off. Stick them on. We'll pop a couple of pins in there just to uh, make sure they don't move, of course. Okay, so when it comes to marking out for the uh, for the pickets for the staves, obviously I put tape marks uh, where the, the post ends, literally that's where the wall is that the post is attached to. So you don't want the stave, the picket to go absolutely right up against that. Ideally you want it to go with a sort of half a, half a stave's distance in there and I've got a little bit of scrap that's uh, about that size. So with that roughly in there. We can then use our patented doohickey to bring that down to the right height. Always checking. Yep. And then we can check the square spot on. So that's where our first rail, uh, our first um, picket is going to be marked. Having got the first stave, the first picket in place, I'm actually going to fix it. Um, so if you think we're working left to right, this is the left hand end of the fence and that's the right. Uh, at this end, there's a, the, the, the fence posts are going between two rainwater downpipes and obviously there's a little gully, a, a circle right at the bottom. So these are going to have to be trimmed back, um, but I don't know exactly how much space they need. Uh, 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 until I'm there. So the last three, maybe four, at the left hand end here will be screwed in place on site so that they can be removed if there's any work needs to be done to the, uh, to the circle way. So what I'll do is I'll just carefully put a couple of little marks in here so we know roughly where they go and then we'll continue We've got our uh, fence guide in there, and then we can carry on with the, the next. So we're going to nail these down with just a 16 gauge strip nailer, uh, and as we will all the way along, because this is the fifth one, the fifth uh, stave, we'll check it for square, because if you don't, you can end up getting a, a compound error. It's always worth checking. So with all that filled, we just need to let them dry, give it a quick rub over and a coat of paint. So when everything's touch dry, we can unscrew the hold downs and carefully lift the fence out of the way to give us space to get stuck into making the gate. Not forgetting of course that those last four staves at the other end aren't fixed in place yet. <laughs> Forgot they weren't nailed on. So with our fence out of the way, we can get on with our gate. So what we've got here, we've got our rails um, tacked down onto the uh, onto the multi-bench thing here, the small bench. I've got them uh, stopped up hard against a, a, an end stop here with a little uh, 
bench dogs to keep it all together. And um, what I've discovered is that with regard to the spacing, I need a, a somewhere between 39 and 40 millimeters of spacing to get uh, the staves to fit between the gate posts. Now there's a little bit of room to play with there, but to give myself a bit of leeway, <coughs> excuse me, that's what I need. Now what I've got here is a couple of pieces of 18 mil MDF and a couple of three mil packers. Now, that'll give me 39 mil, uh, and then I'm going to every other one. I'm going to add a one mil packer in as well. So it'll be 39 and 40, 39 and 40, because working to 39 and a half millimeter tolerances is not going to happen with <laughs> with me working on a gate. That's for sure. And uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I am going to nail these in, um, not temporarily, but just to give a couple of nails in the front face to fix them in place. Uh, but I will be then flipping it over and screwing in from the back with a with a cross brace uh, because obviously a gate is subject to um, a lot more stresses than uh, a, a, a fence uh, and it does need uh, a, a more secure fixing. So anyway, with that in mind, on with the nailer. So this is going to be the hinge side. So we want a cross brace going up this way. With the cross brace cut and in place, we can screw everything together, first drilling pilot holes as we don't want the wood to split. And following on with countersunk screws on both the rails and the cross brace. After a quick brush down, we can fill the screw holes with a two-pack resin filler that sets in about 20 minutes. Flipping the gate over and using a couple of offcuts to keep it off the bench while I fill the nail holes on the front face. And after a quick rub down, we can give our gate a final coat of paint on both sides. And I'm going to leave it there for this week. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we're running very long on this one. Who knew there was so much to say about a fence and a gate? Uh, if you've liked it, please give it a thumbs up, share it, and do consider subscribing so you'll be notified when I post something new. I'll catch you next time. Take care.